Thomas Steve Siegel back with mentaltoughnessblog.com. 36 years of interviewing self-made millionaires, 1,321 interviews, face-to-face -face interviews over after all these years, over all these years. And this is what I found. Here's what they do. Here's their step-by-step -step process. It's really three steps and that's it. Number one, they assess their interests and their passions. They look at what they love to do. When you go into when they go into a bookstore or on Amazon, what are the books and magazines that draw them naturally? Not what they have to do for their job or maybe for their business or whatever, but what naturally do they gravitate towards? Like I always gravitated toward psychology, especially in the context of peak performance because I was a tennis player and trying to be a pro tennis player and then became a pro tennis player and trying to be a better pro tennis player. So I always gravitated towards psychology. You didn't have to tell me to do it, I wanted to do it. And I probably should have been studying some of the other things in college, but when everyone was studying in college, the, the courses, I was mostly concerned with the psychology of peak performance. So they, they look at what they love to do. Number two, they do an assessment. They find out, will anyone pay for this? Is it a business or is it just a hobby? You know, um, it just, it, they just do research. And you can do that online very easily now than much more than obviously than you could before. And then number three, what they do is they, they connect it. They connect their passion and interest and love of something into a solution. They connect it to a business as long as it, someone will pay for it. They connect it to that and then they launch it. And that's really it. So here are the three steps. They find out what their passions and interests are, naturally. Not what people tell them to do, not what they're supposed to do, not what their parents want them to do, or their kids, or their spouse, or whomever. What they really naturally love to do. And then two, they do an assessment. They look it up online, Google it, see if anyone's buying it. Does anyone pay for this particular solution? And then number three, they turn it into a business. So here's the ultimate prize. They pursue their passion with love, and they enjoy every minute of it. Not every minute, business is tough, so there are tough times. But they, they, they enjoy most of it because they love the topic, they love the business, they love the service, whatever it is, they're, the product, whatever it is they're, they're pursuing. That's the, and, and they become wealthy as, as, as a result. That's say, call it becoming a self-made millionaire, whatever wealthy means to you, it's a relative term. But they become wealthy in the process and they enjoy the fruits of, of that, whole, that whole thing. And the second place trophy, let's say, is they don't become wealthy, but they still get to enjoy the process of pursuing their passion and interest in the context of a business. And I will tell you something, that they're being in business for a little over 30 years, 10 countries around the world had hundreds of employees collectively over in our businesses um, over the years and uh, made some money. I will tell you this, just for your consideration, I'm saying this now because I, so many people are emailing me saying, I'm in the COVID crisis, I'm shut down, I'm reevaluating my financial life, my spiritual life, my home life, my personal life, my, my marriage life, my single life, whatever, because we all have this time. And I, I feel the same way. I'm doing the same kind of thing. I think we all are I get at some level, I guess. I just will say this to you. If, you, if you're not, you may know this, you may not, but if you pursue your passion, your interest, and you're able to turn it into a business and you don't become wealthy, you kind of became wealthy anyway. And here's what I mean. Just by being able to spend your life doing something you really are passionate about, you believe in, and you're, you're willing to defend it and stand up for it and plant your flag about it, and you talk about it at parties with people because when, when you're in a social setting because you just can't help yourself, and you talk about it when you're doing your business every day, you've already effectively won the first place trophy because if you've never been wealthy before, it's a great thing. It makes your life easier. It can be fun. It doesn't make you any happier. I've interviewed a lot of wealthy people, as I've said, more than anyone uh, I think that's, you know, that's ever at least published any, any work about it. Maybe someone's interviewed more people, but certainly a lot of people. And I will tell you, that their happiness did not come from living in a mansion or having a tennis court in their backyard or driving a Ferrari or whatever it is that they were kind of after. The happiness came from the journey, the process 
uh, the pursuit of their passion. I've interviewed a fair amount of people, you guys. Now, some of you know this because you're older. Maybe you've, you've gone through this. But some of you that are younger may not know it. I've interviewed a fair amount of people that didn't love what they were doing for a living. They had jobs they didn't like. They were making a lot of money. Or they had businesses they didn't like, but they were making a lot of money. And I've been one of those people that's been in a business I didn't like before and made a lot of money. More money than I'd ever dreamed I could make. And I was miserable because the money doesn't make up for the misery. It doesn't make up for the day-to-day. -day. You don't want to be there. That sucks. That's not wealth to me. I don't care how much money you have. Not at least to me. It might be to you. But, but my point of this is, is that I've interviewed a fair amount of wealthy people that pursued their goals for money and found that when they arrived, because they didn't enjoy the process, they just wanted the end result. When they got there, they were hollow. They were shallow. They just, it just, the, the, the fulfillment wasn't there. All they had was the money and all these things. I, I remember, I remember that process myself. All my friends, oh, you're so lucky you can retire. You know, you made millions of dollars. You can retire here, retire there and do whatever you want to do. And I and hang up the phone and think, I know they mean well, and I get what they're saying. Why do I feel so miserable? I don't want to be in this business. I don't want to be with these partners, with these people. I want to do this. I want to do something different. And if you make, if I make money doing it, great. And if I don't, well, then I'll have succeeded anyway because I've done what I wanted to do. I've written my own ticket. I'll have written my own story, whatever you want to call it. I'll stake my own claim, not someone else's claim, so I could drive a fancy car, or live in a fancy house. It's overrated. Now, I will say, if you can have it all, if you can do both then God bless you, go for it. It's, it's nice, it's nice to have nice things. We all like nice things and it's great. But if you're relying on it for the core of your happiness, I don't know. I think you might be, might be uh, disappointed in the end, you know? But, uh, so anyway, that's it. I just wanted to just, to, while we're all rethinking kind of our lives, I suppose, because we have time, if you are. Um, again, I know I have thought about, had a lot of thoughts, they have a lot of time, because we can't leave anywhere, go anywhere at this point. Uh, just consider this, consider this going forward, that if you pursue your passion, you live it on your terms, you've already, you're already wealthy. I mean, you, you know, all this stuff, you know, I mean, I've been here in the Bone Allen Mansion, I guess we've been here for about five years and it's wonderful. It's a six acre estate and it's historic and we got all kinds of stuff and it's all, it's all wonderful and I really do enjoy it. But I would give it up in a second, a second. If I had to do something for a living that I didn't really love. I, I, I live in a, uh, an apartment above a drugstore to do what I love to do. Now, I'm glad I could do both and I'm fortunate and, and you may be as well. But uh, I wouldn't trade it. The money's not worth it. The stuff isn't worth it. It's doing what you love to do. Helping people in the process and feeling that, that sense of deep fulfillment that you can't get by buying things or properties or tennis courts or anything, anything else something to think about. Stay safe out there. Stay mentally tough. I appreciate you watching the vlog and I'll see you in the next post. Take care.